as you said, well, uh, yes, I, I just wanted to say some things before, I mean, going to some specific aspects. Um, yes, it was a difficult task uh, because Greece, as you said, is at the front line. But of course, it's not a country that people come here to live here. They just want to get through Greece and go to the other countries of the European Union. Uh, but the pressure is, uh, of course, very important uh, because we have borders on the land and borders on the sea. And it is imp important for a country to guard the borders uh, because this is a question of of national, uh, I mean, it, it's an existential pro problem. Uh, you cannot leave your borders like that. Everybody can get in. There are laws in the country. And it's uh, a question of national security, of course, because uh, when a lot of people enter your country, you never know who they are. I mean, you cannot have, uh, in 2015, we had uh, one million people, more than one people, million, million people come in the uh, country. Of course, through the, uh, the, the road of Balkans, they got to, to Europe, but that had the consequence because uh, uh, European closed our borders, our north borders. Uh, so what we try to do now is to guard our borders, which is very important, as I told you, as a problem of national security. And of course, to guard the conventions, which is very important, important the humanitarian rights. Uh, and uh, so what we decided as a government is that in the country must stay who they must stay. I mean, they have the right to stay. They need our protection. And uh, so, of, co of course, somebody will think that these two issues will be in a conflict. I mean, you close the borders, but you want people who need your protection to come in the country. But it's not a question of conflict. It's a question to, to have a, a way to, to live with this, to live with the problem. So we have these issues, and um, of course uh, the country is a country of 10 million people. I mean, it's uh, you cannot uh, uh, invite here all people need your help, and um, so we have to be uh, to be careful on the way because if you have one million people come in the country, you you cannot uh, implement the hu humanitarian uh, values because you have one million people, you cannot save all of them, and you cannot help all of them in the country. Because uh, uh, the one uh, very important problem is that uh, we have children, a lot of children. So these ch children, most of them are unaccompanied. Uh, they result unaccompanied because um, since they know that in this country, according to the law, uh, when you get in with the child, you, you know, they treat you better. So some of the smugglers or of the people who are coming here, they take children from the camps in Turkey. And when they arrive, they say they are their children. And then where, when they fix a little bit their problems, they leave the children in the camps. And I see Sofia Kuvelaki knows very much this, uh, this problem. So uh, one morning, I mean, the governor of a camp uh, can see a little child of five years old and say, well, from where did this boy or this girl come? And some, uh, the problem is that somebody left it there because they, uh, he didn't need any more of this child. So we have a huge problem with the children. And we, there were, uh, when we arrived at the government, there was, uh, we had 5,500 children and accompanied children. And we had more than 300 people at the police stations, uh, children, uh, because, um, you know, they, they could not even live anywhere else. So uh, people uh, used to take these children to the police stations and then the policemen were the nurses of the children 
It was now with the law, this is not permitted anymore. As soon as uh, they tell us that uh, there is a child uh, somewhere in the islands or in the uh, mainland, we can we are go we are, we are going there and take we are taking the children, and so they have I mean they have a very uh, good quality of life now. Now, uh, another problem is because, you know, we are talking about sustainability. Okay, we have, uh, we guard our uh, borders, but we have people here. And most of these people here, they, they were not integrated. When uh, we arrived in office, there was only one program, program, the Helios program from IOM, but nothing else. And of course, no money uh, because uh, you know, the, the period, uh, the European period of uh, financing had finished and the other one uh, starts uh, for, uh, I mean, the next period is 2021-2027 and they have not started yet to give the money because the money will be in Greece at, at about April of 2022. So we try to get money from our budget. And then when the European money arrive, we are going to put the money back. And um, so we have, so since we're talking about sustainability, we have these people here. Um, most, uh, a lot of them, they, they've got the, the, the national protection, our protection, the international protection. But they cannot stay there doing nothing in a camp or in houses paid it by the state. And then, you know, they, they stay there doing nothing and then they learn nothing, they can do nothing, but Greece needs some people. So we started to create our new programs, which are an agricultural one, um, because Greece uh, every year uh, asks for people coming from other countries to work at the fields. So we are going to start an, start an agricultural one program, a tourist program. Um, this year, many of our hotels had problem to find the people working there. And of course, there is another problem, which is sustainability. These all unaccompanied children, they get adult. They don't stay children forever. Mm. So you have to do something for them. You have them there having everything, living, um, I mean, in a way you don't imagine. And when they get 18, you just tell them, go out. This is a problem. They know Greek, they have learned English, they, they have to do something in their life because they are children that they are going to stay in Greece. So we're going to have a new program, Elios Junior, always with IOM, uh, who, who ran very well the first program and uh, it will start six months because, beca before they become adult at 17.6 and uh, it will go on to 21 years old. So these children, they will decide what they want to do. They want to go to the university, they want to do something else, they want to learn uh, something for their life to work. And so what, what I'm telling you is that this is the first time we start to have uh, a lot of programs for the asylum uh, people. Uh, and of course, you know, for the um, education, everybody, even the asylum seekers must have education. The first thing they learn when they arrive in Greece is that here education is mandatory. But it was another problem. The children that come from Turkey or from anywhere and they get out from the boat, uh, they know nothing, no language. Mm. Uh, they, they knew one dialect of Afghanistan. So you take the child before they had, I mean, I don't know, it was a kind of ideology. They said, okay, no, we can take these children and they, we get them at the Greek public school. Imagine, 12 years old, it's difficult even for our children to go to our school. And you take a, a, a boy, a girl, and this 
This child must go to our public school. They know nothing, then there are problems with the society. No, I had a new program with the UNICEF, three years program, a huge program for the non-formal education. So it will be a bridge to the formal education, to the Greek public school. They will learn uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of things, not, uh, not only the language, at the camps or where they are. And then they are going to get to the public school and that will be a good bridge for them. So who can, these children can stay here. Uh, last, of course, we had problem with the coronavirus issue, but not in the camps. We did not have, you know, expanded uh, problem. We tried to, um, to have the vaccination there. It's the same problem with the whole population. I mean, they have the, the same fears and everything. Uh, but uh, what I want to tell you before I give, uh, you give to anyone else the word is that the floor is that uh, uh, Greece uh, now, uh, last Tuesday, uh, 11 children from Afghanistan, 10 boys from Afghanistan and one girl from Iraq left for Paris, France, uh, with a flight to Paris. And uh, for, with these 11 children, we achieved the number, uh, the milestone of 1,000 children relocated in European countries. The, that was, believe me, a very difficult achievement because it, we worked on this uh, only the, in the pandemic period. In these two years, from 2020, April, it was the first flight, until last Tuesday. Uh, the borders were closed, the, uh, the airports were closed. It was, not, uh, it was uh, impossible to travel, but we achieved the number 1,006 children. And this, I mean, it's important even for our uh, relations with the other European countries. And we, we prove that we can do it. Because uh, why we do it? Because we always have, and I finish with this, we always have children come in the country. So if we don't do the relocate in safety, you know, it's easy to do the relocate for adults, but, but for the children, you have protocols where they go, what they, there are a lot of problems in trafficking. We are going to have a new program on trafficking. So what we, we want is to have uh, children relocated in other countries. So when they arrive, the new one, we can, uh, you know, stand it. It's not easy for a country to have thousands and thousands of children. We can, now we have a 2,100 from 5,500. Mm. And we continue the relocation. So, because, I mean, 10 days before, we had a boat here. There were, I don't know, 74 people, half were children. And so we always have children here. Right. And this is a question of sustainability because they are going to work here to study here. Mm -hmm. Thank you.